Welcome back to another edition of Our City. A few things going around the city of Elizabeth this week. On Wednesday, June 10th at 1045 in the morning, I will welcome a delegation of Portuguese officials led by Mayor Fernando Sira from the municipality of Sintra in Portugal. There will also be a luncheon at the Valencia restaurant in his honor, and there will be a reception that evening at the Portuguese Instructive Social Club on Routes 1 and 9. On Thursday, June 11th at 11 o'clock, I'll join the Board of Directors of the YMCA of Eastern Union County in a dedication ceremony of the Madison Health Shelter, located at 124 Madison Avenue. For more information, call 355-9622, extension 235. If you need more information about these events or any other events, please call our Public Information Office at 908-820-4124. And I'm pleased to be joined on this week's show to talk about the upcoming Elizabeth Forum by Dr. Paul Mattingly, the president of the Elizabeth Historical Society, and Ms. Linda Epps, the CEO of the New Jersey Historical Society here in our state. Paul, Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you very Thank much. You. It's a pleasure to be back. Good to see you. Good to be here. What do we start with? I mean, you both got great backgrounds. So I figured I'm going to start a little bit with your background. Cause, uh, well, she's got the bigger organization. Why don't we start with her? We'll start with Linda. <laughs> Linda, because I know you were born and raised in Elizabeth, and I always no. brag about the lady in charge of the historical society in our entire state right. was reared in Elizabeth. Well, and I always brag that Elizabeth is the absolute best city in the state of New Jersey, probably on the East Coast. There you All go. Right. That's, that's a big <laughs> brand there, Linda. <laughs> I love Elizabeth. Grew up on Olive Street. Grew up right? on Tell Olive Street, lived there for my first 22 years, and actually moved out of Elizabeth in 1976 only because of marriage. Hmm. Did you go to Elizabeth schools? Marriage. Went to Elizabeth schools, Lafayette, from kindergarten until ninth grade, and then a Batten graduate, uh, then went to Douglas College, Seton Hall, and Drew for the graduate degrees. So, Linda, mm -hmm. you're... Uh, your role in history, how did you ever go from, you know, growing up in the streets of Elizabeth and attending local schools to getting active in, in history because it's such a fascinating distance to travel? Well, it's probably because of the teachers that I had at Lafayette. I had a few teachers who were real history fanatics. And uh, through them, I taught to love history, but more important, I was taught to love my state and my city. And I can remember as a child, for homework assignments, writing poetry about certain aspects of Elizabeth, and uh, traveling, taking field trips to all different parts of the city. And my appreciation for Elizabeth and for the state really came from the, the elementary school, which is why I'm a little saddened when history and the arts are taken out of the schools a little, because they really help to shape me and to, and to I guess, um, it nurtured my, my love and my appreciation for where I live. Great comment, mm -hmm. especially well, since we're grammar school students. It, it, that, <laughs> yeah, it's Dr. Absolutely. Manley, you're, you're a professor mm -hmm. at college. Isn't it great to hear that absolutely. it was uh, grammar school teachers that shaped their role in history? Well, I think whenever history inspires, it doesn't matter where it comes, but it's, it's nice to hear that it has a, a lifelong... Now, you're a professor life. of history, right? I, I am now emeritus from New York University. Oh, emeritus. Where I taught uh, for 40 years. Does that mean they pay you, you don't have to teach? Uh, no, is that, that what that means? No, that means I still have connections to them, uh, but uh, it means I, there's no way in which I would ever make uh, the salary of a mayor. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, you're not born here, though. Uh, no, no, but no. My, actually my wife's uh, family uh, grew up in the uh, St. Mary's Parish, and they first came here about uh, 1869. And they, you're, there's been a family presence on your yeah. wife's side. Yeah, okay. since, since then. Yeah. And how did you get involved in history? Uh, Linda was uh, motivated well, by grammar school teachers. How about you, Dr. Manley? Um, well, I've always been a fan of history, but it, uh, the bug really bit when I was in college. And uh, I had some really outstanding teachers mm -hmm. like you do. There's no substitute for a really good teacher, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just uh, never looked back. And just your, your graduate work is in history? And yes, at the University of Wisconsin, right. Okay. And I was in American history and have taught that for 40 years and all my, all my books and writings are on American history. Now, the Elizabeth Forum is something that the both of you have been actively involved yes. in. And it's a little bit about the Historical Society of Elizabeth and the New Jersey Historical Society. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can start with what is the Elizabeth Forum and tell us a little bit about it. And we'll start with you, Dr. Manley, since we started with Linda in the beginning of the show. 
The Forum is an effort to uh, reconstruct the historical narrative of this city, especially in the 20th century. That really has not been done. Um, and what we are trying to do is to reconstruct the city sort of neighborhood by neighborhood and to present it to the public whose history it is. A lot of people don't think they belong in history. And for so long, when history was just a matter of political campaigns, presidential campaigns really, and um, wars, a lot of people couldn't find themselves there. But one of the great revolutions of the 60s, 70s, and 80s academically is the shift from looking at history ch and change from the top down to looking at it from the bottom up. So we now look at all kinds of groups who were left out of previous histories, immigrants, uh, school children, uh, teachers, uh, uh, labor. Um, labor is almost women. never... Uh, women. Women. <laughs> women. Um, and uh, all the racial uh, and ethnic groups that have composed um, our culture. And what we're trying to do is to do a similar sort of thing, to see the really important changes as coming from the bottom up and to see it coming out of the experiences of people who actually experience them. And so we do, um, we will do use the manuscript census records to sort of see what the social structure of a neighborhood is. But the real meat of it is uh, the oral histories that we do because everybody's got a story. Everybody has an interesting story. Everybody has such rich details that you can never find in our formal official repositories. Repositories are very important. Uh, and when we find stuff, actually uh, Linda and I have worked out a kind of deal that it, when people offer us stuff, we don't really have a repository. We're not trying to create a museum. Uh, in Elizabeth, but some of these things should be preserved. And so we, we talked to Linda about the possibility of putting, of having a sort of an Elizabeth shelf uh, in the New Jersey Historical Society. So we do, we're responsible for preservation, but really what we're trying to do is to get a new narrative of the city and to preserve two of its most extraordinary uh, residences, the Belcher Ogden Mansion and the Bonnell House. Linda, your role in this, uh, Dr. Manley has been absolutely terrific in preserving history. He did a sure. study in a couple of other areas. That's right. On yeah. Curry Head a while ago. That's right. Where you That's, grew which up, is actually. my home. And, um, she helped him. And she, and well, you, and I'm, she, I'm able to offer him resources because I did live here for a long time and my family is still here and uh, they've, they've been here for a long time. But, you know, we met just a few years ago. We were put together by a mutual friend who said, I think the two of you need to mm -hmm. get together and talk. And uh, what he can research, I can offer information or offer resources on another level. And has done. And, and have tried to do that. Um, not just providing shelf space for any of the information or any of the objects that we might find from Elizabeth, but I have a pretty good memory of my own. And in interviewing our oral history participants, uh, can ask questions or can bring up an mm -hmm. incident or a special period of time and try and draw from them their memories of that particular time period. I have that kind of history that Paul does not have. Um, in addition to that, most of the people that we interview claim that they can't remember anything. Mm -hmm. That That's they, you know, or, yeah. or you don't, you don't, why would you want to talk to me? And I can sometimes bring up something to make them feel comfortable and to prove to them that they really have quite a bit of knowledge, untapped. They haven't thought about it in many, many years. But once we start talking to them, the memories just start to flow. Right. Uh, the photographs uh, come and we're, we're really able to bring them to a level of conversation that they never thought possible. 